Ferrari, welcome to today's Power Hour. This update, folks, is for the last day of February, right? Last trading day, right? Make sure you guys are checking that. Keep your eye on calendar that you're not messing up on some of your options dates by thinking we only had 28 days. So let's go ahead and make sure you all can hear me. If you would go ahead and type in the number one in the text chat in the questions box so let me know you can hear me. That would be fantastic. And for those of you that are joining us for the very first time here, I know we've got a, a lot of new people here today. One is yes, two is no. Uh, anytime you're answering questions, I try to make life very simple for you to do so. Excellent, and I do appreciate it. Oh, there you go. Robert says, uh, you're always number one, Rob. <laughs> there you go. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Paolo says, Jim, hope all is well. All right, cool. All right, excellent. Good morning and good afternoon. All right, depending on where you're at. Philly 4 are coming in loud and clear. All right, that's great, Diane. I appreciate you letting me know that. Fantastic, cool. So, folks, if you do have a question that you want to ask, and this is your first time utilizing the GoToWebinar platform, just on your on the toolbar that popped up, you'll see a questions box, open that up and you can type your question in. You are not the only person that is here. It may look like it to you because all you get to see is your name. Only the admin and myself can see everybody that's in there and as well as the communication and the questions that go through. Um, so uh, just if you have the question, go ahead and type it in. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go ahead and go through our startup here, guys. So online workshops coming up. I've got Monster Market Movers coming up on March 31st is the next one I'll be doing. And then live from New York, it's E-mini Trading. It's part of our spring cleaning series. I'll talk a little more about that later is March 9th. Next up workshops I'll be teaching live in March are in Atlanta, Charlotte, and Fort Wayne. Two-day traders camp, last one before TSS, coming up on March 29th and 30th. Uh, tonight is Trader Talk, or Think Tank, for the E-minis. Uh, on Demand is the previous Monster Market Movers, which is available until the 23rd of March. Here we are at Power Hour, and then a brand new workshop that we are going to be putting on regular, regularly, folks, is called Options 101. It's a two-hour premium workshop in the evening. It's on March 7th, which is a Monday, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern. All right, so... Here's the follow us at Better Trades, guys. Here's my info as well as the Better Trades info. Uh, if you choose you want to follow Better Trades on Facebook, awesome. Go right ahead. Just search Better Trades and you're good. If you want to follow me uh, or be friends with me, you need to tell me who you are. Right? I may not recognize your kids' pictures or your grandkids or your dog or whoever else is up there. So just send me an email, that, you know, message, a private message. Say, hey, Rob, remember me? I'm in this class. Uh, there's the Twitter info, YouTube, and so forth, right in there. And let's go ahead and get to our disclaimer. Don't know where it went. Where did the disclaimer go? <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me move that around a bit. Will it let me? Yeah, okay. So I don't know why. I know, so you say, you can lose it. Yeah, I wish I could. I really do, but... I'd get in a lot of trouble for losing the disclaimer. All right, let's go through that. Basically, it says, I am not an advisor. I cannot legally tell you to buy or sell a stock. You know what? It's against the law. The SEC, which the Securities and Exchange Commission, requires you to be licensed in order to do so. I am not, and I do not want to be. So if you find a candidate, an indicator, or set up something, anything you like here today, my suggestion is you paper trade it first before ever putting one penny of real money and to the trade, the setup, or the indicator, and then and only then would you do so if it fits your own personal risk profile and risk tolerance. I keep something in mind. Because I am not an advisor, that means I am not under trading restrictions. That means that I may choose to enter or exit a trade at any given time without prior notice. Oh, yeah, there you go. Robert says, no more disclaimers. SEC is becoming friendly. Um, doubt it very much. Yeah, you got it, Robert. I doubt it, too. <laughs> I doubt it too. So Bruce is asking, with the next steps, do you need to bring your computers? Bruce, it's not a requirement to bring a computer to a next step. Uh, for some people, I find it actually becomes a, a, a deterrent. It makes it more complicated to follow along with what the coach is teaching up on the screen. So, but others do awesome with it and are trying to follow along and play some of the same trades as non-funded trades. 
so having the computer is helpful, but certainly not a requirement. Uh, let's see. All right, so let me back up and see whether we got questions started here. All right, give me a second to look at. We'll look at uh, Netflix in a moment, Paolo. Uh, yes, you're right, Brian. Tomorrow doesn't count as February. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Robert, they've just got to get them up on the system. We've got them scheduled. They just haven't put any else out there. So you know what? I need to. Uh, make that point today. So Robert was just saying he's not seeing anything past April 1st for next steps. They just got to get them up on the schedule so you guys are able to um, make plans for them. Just writing myself a note so I'll handle that right after the meeting today. Jeff, I've been, I have fib drawing questions. Okay, give me a second to get to that, Jeff. We're going to get to the charts in a moment. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything and I will come back to that as well. Uh, let's see, Richard saying, hey Rob, hope you are well. I am, thank you, sir. Uh, how? <laughs> um, gardening was good uh, yesterday, Richard. Uh, 25,000 steps on my Fitbit, and I hit another uh, 11,000 this morning out there. Yeah, it was beautiful in New York yesterday. All right, Jeff, excellent. Jeff said just signed up for the Market Insights and the Monday Night Trader Talk. Looking forward to them both. Yep, tonight's going to be a good class, Jeff. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right, so guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, don't drop your candidates in just yet. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'll explain it in a moment because I've already got two in here and they're kind of mixed in. So let me make sure that I go through this properly before, um, before I go ahead and have candidates all over the place and I'll never get to see them. So first question was, Paolo was asking on Netflix. So let's go change over to Netflix and take a quick look there. And let me put a fib on here, Paolo. Uh, let's see where we're looking at there. Right from that high wick. down to our bottom. Okay. All right. So Paolo was asking about, uh, it looks like it's going nowhere. Uh, and if I'm looking at a March option, is it time to salvage the premium that's in there? Well, you know, Paolo, here you've got a chart and what's it done? The last two days we did get above the moving averages, but we pushed our head not only into a major resistance line, right, that fib line, but there's, and even if you're not using that, you've got this double top pattern here, right, where we pushed into that, which really coincides with, you know, this closing price right here. There's a lot of confluence at that price range. So does it pop from here? The question is, I don't know. But if you're at a point that time premium is starting to, to deteriorate in an option, regardless of which stock or option it is, it's probably time to look at doing something else um, and move on. Now. This is updated, obviously, for today. This is a daily chart. You know, if you get a pop tomorrow or today and get above that $96 level, which is really what, uh, or 9609, that's really what it's going to take is get up above that golden line. The eight crosses up through the 21, the pink through the yellow. Then yes, you've got a better indication of some bullishness. But with this overall yuck that's gone on here, um, you know, to the downside. I'm a little inclined to say, you know, throw don't throw caution to the wind on this one. Uh, I listed them as a neutral in the market insights, Paolo, and we said day trade. So I'm not liking the current pattern. Tight distance between the eight, which is 92 and three quarter, uh, 96. You know, I guess not too bad. But let's see, we're looking at about 93, so we've got about $3 in there. So when I say tight distance, it's not a lot of wiggle room in there. There's some, but not a whole lot. So be careful there. All right, so Jeff was saying I had fib drawing questions. Uh, I looked at these stocks today and drew fibs. Uh, I'd come up with different swing highs and lows in you. 
broke to zero and negative 600 in your chart, so not sure why you did not redraw it. Well, Jeff, can you give me one? Give me one that you want to look at um, as an example, and then we'll draw the one and go over that particular one. Okay, so Jeff said Baidu. So let me switch over to Baidu. And let's see what we've got here. So, all right. So, Jeff, I have the FIB that you're looking at from the Market Insights, let's say, is drawn from uh, September's low right in there up to the highs that we had here. Okay, so up to that high right there. And what your comment was, was we violated the 764, shouldn't we redraw? The violation of the 764 is a, a place to consider a redraw. It doesn't mean we stop everything at that point and draw it when it does. The reason we had been waiting, and they recently moved it out, uh, let me see, what was the date of it, the 25th? The reason we had been waiting was on the 25th of February was the scheduled earnings date. Right in there was, was the scheduled earnings date. And they pushed it out. We were closer to you know four or five days back, and then the date had gone out a little bit. So we were waiting for earnings to see did anything change and need to be redrawn. That reversal and on here, it doesn't give us a bigger move. And now there may have been another one that gave us a bigger move than as you had asked, but it doesn't give us a bigger move. But once we got back into the similar range here, that look at that almost like an outlier, Jeff, on a on a um, break of support or resistance, right? It got through, but you know, it's just it, support and resistance don't hold 100%. This really sets up, and let me see, do I have it set up on here? This sets up then, Jeff, for let me see if I've got the the level level on here. I don't. So let me just add it here. This sets up as a Fibonacci four-step trade, Jeff, where we violated the 764. Like that it broke it on the close. The wick is fine. It just barely closed below by a penny or two. Once we get, once we get back above the 764, as it did here, we look for the move back up to the 88 uh, to the 618. So close below the 764. Now we get ready. Bounce anywhere in, within this range. Don't close below. The, although the wick can go below the 882. Come back once we get above the 764, take a bullish trade and look for the move to be up to the 618, which is that 164.13. So that, that setup, Jeff, <clears throat> as a broad range or a big picture analysis, if we break the, set, the 764, that's when we start to look. Does that make sense? So you drew 1130 to 2.9. Right, so you drew from here down to here exactly Jeff you would have you drew yours from this top down to this bottom we once we moved there and came back it's as long as we don't violate it again Jeff on that if we get through there again or it really gets through uh, the I'm sorry the 764 is here I, I'm I'm mixing my colors up because I put the 882 in I'm used to it being green and uh, with the black background I can't do that as easily Yes, Jeff, you could. So could you redraw off of this? The answer is yes. But remember, when you violate the 764, it's only a place to consider. That candle, if we, if we back up, that candle right there on the right side of the chart is what violated the 764, this candle. There's no place to redraw at that point. No, the 764 is the place to consider, Jeff. The 618 is not, a, is not a place to consider a redraw. It's only on the 764. Does that make sense, Jeff?
And Jeff, we can talk some of this tonight as well in uh, the E-mini Trader Talk if you have other other ones we want to look at. No, because you can't see the whole chart today, so you would redraw. Well, all right, Jeff, are we talking about on a daily chart or on a five-minute chart now when you say you can't see the whole chart today? So, guys, here's what I want you to go ahead and do. Um, as Jeff is typing that question in, normally at this part of the workshop, what we're doing is going through and doing analysis on stocks, stocks that you guys want to look at. So type in the symbols that you want to look at, and we'll start pulling those up. And I'll give you some, you know, what I see on the chart, what I see as far as targets go, entries, exits, and so forth. Um, All right, good. So they're starting to come in. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if I can answer on this one for you, Jeff. If not, we're just going to have to put it off until maybe the end of today if we have time there. Um, so you said on the daily, you showed 2.5. You didn't see the swing low. But if you look at – oh, okay, okay. No, no, I, I understand. what I, Jeff, I know what you mean there. I got it. So what I was referencing is that was the only, when I said that and I dragged the chart forward, all I was showing there was that was the day that we broke – the 764. All I was saying was on that day, we didn't have a V bottom yet to draw. You are right. Once you bring current and you see the V bottom, we're okay. But we have a trade setup that we trade within this range called that Fibonacci four step, which is something that I've, you know, in the last two years has become a very popular trade setup for us, both intraday and as well as end of day. So all we use the break of the 764 as a place to get ready. But it doesn't mean we're going to redraw. If we're not really violating through the 882 come back and stay up, we're okay. If we would have come right back down below that 882 again, and I really can't draw on e-signal intraday so because it's just going to erase it. But watch what I'm going to see what we can do. We came down and had that V bottom in there, right there. If we would have come back up and failed right in there, if that would have been the pattern, that failure, yes, we would have redrawn from that top to that bottom. Absolutely. But since we're back within that normal range right now, there's no reason for the redraw. <clears throat> All right, Jeff, cool. All right, guys, so uh, let me get rid of that pen there. So let's go ahead and take a look at some stocks. And, guys, if you happen to type something in earlier on your questions and I didn't answer it, uh, just go ahead and, and copy and paste it. Just drop it back in. Um, actually, DC Jim, you had you had something in there. Uh, where was it? Okay. Did you pick your start point where you picked for Netflix and not the December high because this one, the big green candle? Uh, it was all because of WIC. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I well, uh, DC Jim, I think I explained that. If I didn't, just go ahead and. Okay, just go ahead and, and hit me with another message if not. Richard said, so on Google, uh, it gapped down, hit its target, then filled the gap and kept going because it gap filled, didn't take the trade from your market insights. Would you consider taking the trade when it fails at the 20 MA? All right, so let's go look at Google. Google, and we trade G-O-O-G-L here, guys. I don't really do anything with G-O-O-G um, as an individual, so uh, company. So the fibs are drawn from here up to here. I just got to duplicate them on this chart. And let's just get them to extend automatically so I'm not playing around with them right now. Okay. So we've got them drawn up to this high. All right. So there's the, the daily chart of the FIBS. Now, on in the Market Insights, we said bearish below 724, consider aggressive in the trade. All right. So let's go and look at a five-minute candle on Google. All right, so right on the open, we had that gap down, and the immediate gap fill is what um, is what Richard was saying. 
it gapped down, hit its target, and then filled the gap and kept going because the gap filled, I didn't take the trade. So it gapped down to 724 and a quarter, and we said 724 was our entry. Uh, I'm sorry, it gapped down here. So yeah, I mean, if you're watching this, then absolutely, uh, Richard, I would not be taking this trade on um, that gap down. Our target on Google to the downside was 705. Um, what do we have? I have the right sheet, yeah. 705 and 700. So we gapped down, came all the way down to 720 and came back up again and then has continued to climb. So the question was, would you consider take, uh, taking the trade when it fails at the 20 MA to reduce the amount of stop or would you still wait for the break of the 80 MA? Um, well, I had this down, Richard, as bearish below. I had it down as bearish below 724. So, did I say something about bullish in the recording? Because I'm I'm missing something. It looks like here. You say when it fails at the 20. To, so, if we're looking at the eight versus the 20, I would always work off of the eight whenever possible. The 8 to me is the key of the moving averages. The the 20 is more of the the backup. Hey Kevin, how you doing bud? No worries. Oh, you're talking about bearish? Okay, you're talking about bearish, but under... Okay, so you're saying without the moving averages crossing. Yes, we weren't, we weren't worried about the moving averages crossing Now this is a five minute chart, so I'm not worried about the moving averages crossing on the five because we're focused which are on the the daily, which the eight is already down below the twenty one. So we were looking at that. I wouldn't worry about the five uh, the eight and twenty one crossing here on a five or a fifteen. I'm not worried there. Uh, I'd rather see it what we're looking at on the daily. So we, when we do the analysis, it's all done on a daily chart. When we place the trade, we can use the five minute chart to help us, but the moving averages, and this is the five. The moving averages may not align themselves because it's over such a short period of time, and particularly when it gets to um, a gap like we had this morning of you know six dollars or so, five or six bucks. So, Richard, does that answer it for that? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and look at when. Are you talking about taking on the 20 on the daily? You, yeah, I no, Richard. Uh, on the daily chart, I want it under the eight period moving average. Under the 20 could just be, uh, you know, above the eight is what under the 20 means, right? We didn't get under, you know, uh, below the eight yet. It doesn't give me enough comfort to take that trade uh, because we may bounce right back off of the eight. All right, so uh, let's see. First candidate was win, and that was Dennis. All right, Dennis, so let's go take a look at win. So on the daily chart, we'll go to look at win. We'll go daily first. What a great move it's made lately, huh? So we have, uh, there's a fib that's set up on win right in here. Uh, let me just pull it out all the way. And it goes right up to this point right here. And we came back down. Hit. So here we broke through the 764, came back up, and just continued to run. And their earnings were right about here. The earnings were right about in here, and it's been phenomenal ever since their earnings. My note was bullish with the pullback to the 8 this weekend when we did the analysis on it. And if we get the pullback to that 8 period moving average, and this is a daily chart, which is about $79 right now, we want to see it close near it and bounce and take the bullish trade. So we're looking at 83.60 and an 86.40 are the two upside targets. Downside, you know, I might trade it intraday, but I'm only looking to take this bear, uh, bullish at this point but it's too far away from its moving averages. For those of you that are not familiar with the system of how I trade, you're at 82.83 right now on a daily chart. 
if my moving average is at $79, if I get in now, I've got to wait for me, my system says I need to wait until it gets back down to the moving average, violates it, and then take the, the exit of the trade. You know, if I got in at 83, well, wait a second, if I got to get below 79, what, call it 78 to make it easy math, that's a $5 move, hoping that I can make a move up a dollar or, you know, three dollars. So it's way too much risk for me to take it at that point. So we're just looking for the pullback to the eight, give me a close near it and a bounce, and fantastic, right, is my entry on it. Now, will I day trade it? You know, if we look at SPX, Uh, what am I doing here? Okay. If we look at SPX, right, overall pattern on SPX, moving averages have crossed. We've got up into bullish bias on XPS, uh, SPX at this point on the S&P 500. Let me just highlight this so I can pull it out a little bit. All right, so... I love the pattern that's there, but for me to look at this and say, okay, how bullish are we? Well, we're above the eight, but we're so far away from that moving average, I'm not interested in taking anything um, bullish that's that far away. But let's say that the S&P was failing today and was falling down. I don't care really how far it's going down. It's just bearish. I can go back to win, and I'll take the bearish trade on win, knowing that $79 and 76 and three quarter are my two downside targets for an intraday trade. All right. So Dennis, hopefully that uh, that helps. Thomas was asking on Apple. All right, so let's go and set a Fibonacci up on Apple. We're going to come off of this high right here. We're down at this body right there. Uh, yeah, I think it's a body, but that low on that day. Right there, okay. Okay. So here's the thing about Apple, uh, who was asking that? Thomas was asking. So here's the thing about Apple, Thomas. If you look at what's gone on the last, well, you guys tell me, uh, would you call this, and you can give me numbers if you want, uh, three would be bullish, four would be bearish, five would be neutral. Would you call it bullish, bearish, or neutral? And you could just write it if you forgot the numbers already. You could just write neutral. Okay, so I have bullish, I have bearish, and I have neutral. I'm, I've gotten all three answers in here right now. Okay, so let's look at it first off. When I call bias, when I talk bias, primarily that is a focus of moving averages. That's what the condition of, of bias is. For me to be bullish, the eight-period moving average has to be on the top. As of yesterday's close, remember this is today's candle, it was not. So I would not be myself considering this to be bullish because the moving averages haven't crossed. Now, could I be aggressive and get in a little bit earlier than the moving average crossover? Yeah, you could. You could, but that to me personally is where I tend to get my head lopped off. Right? I, all I can remember every time I look at a setup like this is the Disney movie uh, or whatever, I think it's a Disney movie, but it's a cartoon. Uh, where it starts off with off with her head, right? In Alice in Wonderland, off with her head. And that's kind of what this is setting up for potentially. We've got, in my opinion, we've got more of a neutral bias here. And if we drag this back, now yes, we've broken above a little bit, all right? We got out here and up here, we could even put an, another rectangle. Uh, right about there. Right, we can even add an additional rectangle in there. Let's do this. Let's pull it back a little so you can see where the distinction is. Um, 
actually I would not use that top. I would be using these tops in there, right? So we could have a separate rectangle there, but right now, Thomas, this has kind of gone in a little bit of a sideways mode. So I am a little bit less leery of wanting to take an overnight trade um, directional-wise on this setup, right? So the bias of the moving average is really bearish. If the stock broke below that lower moving average, we might consider a bearish trade, but we keep dropping down to $93 and not being able to get any further down. Yeah, so Scott, when I put the neutral when I put the neutral on it, that was me saying I'm only going to take um yeah. When I put that neutral, I'm trying to think of what the analysis was yesterday when I did it actually it was Saturday. Um oh, okay. What does neutral say, Scott? Neutral says we're between 21 and 55 and I'm not seeing 55s on here. So let me go and add that. I should have it on here. Um I don't Okay, so let's go and insert another moving average. So the bias is based on what, Scott? It's based on our moving averages, right? So insert study. Moving average, let's apply, close, let's edit. Uh, one, two, oh, there it is, okay. So let's change this to a 55, and let's try to get some kind of, hmm. uh, let's see, maybe that more down here. Just got to be careful I don't make it too dark. All right. So, Scott, the neutral bias says we were above the 21 but below the 55. That's why the neutral bias. But because the moving averages were pinned so close together and we had the 96.43 right on top of it for the FIB level, that's why we said if we got down below 95 and three quarter, we would take the bearish trade. But still being concerned at that 93 level on the downside. All right. Good, Diane said I draw the rectangle, which is what we did. Bruce, it tells me a lot. Okay, good, good. And, and that's, guys, that's what it's all about, right? That's why we do this. That's why I do Power Hour, to make these types of things jump out on, at you. You're quite welcome, Thomas. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ron says MS. Is uh, stock. So let's go take a look. All right, so let me bring this one out a little bit, and let's start looking. Now, MS is not one that I normally trade. So I can see that we had this little bit of a move down here. We had this move up. We had this reversal, big candles, a little bit of a move back up, but more sideways. Big drop down, sideways. I'm okay with that little hiccup in there, and that move to the downside. So we're going to go ahead and grab the Fibonacci support and resistance tool. We're going to work off of that swing high right there down to this swing low right here. And then I'll pull it out a little bit to the right. And let's see what's going on. Actually, let's do it one more time. Let's move it out a little more. Okay. Just it's a lot easier when the numbers are not sitting right on top of it. So I would give uh Ron, I would give this a neutral bias. We're below the 50, okay, stop, back up. The overall pattern is bearish, right? You can see the downward move momentum on the stock. We got above the moving average. It's the yellow moving average, which is 21. The pink, which is the eight, is the lowest moving average. So there's no way, personally, I take any, or consider anything here to be bullish. We could easily see a flip over at this point and a run to the downside, Right, so I'm not interested in anything bullish at this point, even if it starts climbing higher, unless it's an intraday trade. I'll buy this week's, you know, this Friday's option and trade it that way and be out of it today, but nothing I would hold overnight by buying next month's option. You know, by going out and buying March or April uh, positions right now. So as we 
as we get above the, the 21, this is kind of the same thing that Scott had asked before when, when he brought the comment up about Apple from the weekend's analysis in the Market Insights. We're up here above the 21. It's on the down, on the underneath the 21, which tells me that we do not have a bullish bias yet. We're pinned between the 21 and the 55. That's a neutral bias, which means day trade. For me, that means I won't hold overnight. Now, my downside target is going to be that 2444 which is the 8 and then 2416 there's a confluence between those two and then right at 2117 is my next target now my targets up are 26 and 27 half but Rob if you're neutral what do we care then because if you're going to day trade this and it pushes right now up to 26 bucks you need to make a decision do you still want to be in this trade do you want to tighten your stops do you want to scale out of the trade you've got to decide then what to do and I'm giving you the decision points at those areas of what you might consider uh, doing next on that. Uh, Bruce said, um, oh, that's on a different stock. Okay, I'll get to FLO in a little bit, Bruce. Because uh, right now I'm flip-flopping between up and down, just trying to find all the symbols and the questions, rather, where you guys put them in. All right, so Ron, hopefully that was okay for you. Let's go take a look. Joseph's asking about Tesla. I'll get it right yet. Okay. So we got Tesla. So let's go ahead and draw a Fibonacci on Tesla. And for those of you that are just figuring it out, Guys, I am very much a straight line analysis type trader. In other words, I believe uh, in trading harmonically. Fibonacci's is a harmonic indicator. But more importantly, I believe in using human nature uh, in my trade setups. I do not believe that there is chaos in the market that is unplanned. I believe all chaos is planned chaos, and I think there are ways that we can capitalize on it. Fibonacci is an indicator that helps us to do that. And if you are just a, a straight line drawer, or you just you just draw your own lines, you know, horizontal, diagonal, you're going to find that my lines will tend to align with it very heavily. Right? If you look at this line right here, this purple one, purple most important line is purple, 618. Just if I were to snap a horizontal line right there, you can see that that was a great support level right in here. Right? And guys, this isn't a, a setup. I didn't make this one up and, and cherry pick this one. I drew it right now in front of you. I didn't have a fib drawn on this. Right? So, all right, Joseph. So we're looking at Tesla. I had Tesla down yesterday as a neutral bias. Now remember, we're looking at a candle that has opened up and moved above the moving average today. So the 8 had crossed through the 21, but we were still between the two moving averages. I didn't call it bullish yet. Now we're above the 55. I would consider this one bullish if this were the close of the day, but I would be a little cautious on this one. Maybe I'd consider a little bit aggressive to take a bullish trade here because the eight moving average is not on the top. Guys, yes, I will miss out on a bunch of trades. You know, I missed out on this whole bullish run in here. Don't care because I was able to capture a lot of the bearish run that we had in there. And once we pull back to a key area and bounce, and get some confirmation, that to me is where we take the entries, not with uh, kind of getting them a little bit early, uh, is my thought to it. Uh, let's see. So Joan said, did you say to be bullish, a candle needs to be above the 21 EMA? Well, in, in this, on this page right here, Joan, right, and I'll, I'll mark them, I know, um, it's the 55 EMA, the yellow is the 21 EMA, and the pink is the 8 EMA. Okay, so for me, Joan, what I'm looking for, who we just on before, Apple? This was Tesla, right? All right, Tesla down. Okay. So if we use the Apple chart with the eight period moving average being below the 21, Joan, and we're pinned between the 
21 and the 55, I am neutral on this setup, right? When the moving average, now what I mean by that is if the stock today got above the 55, I still would not take a bullish directional trade because the 8 is the lowest moving average. Ideally, I want it to at minimum cross through the 21, but in a perfect world, I want it to be above the 55. It's not a perfect world right now for that. Right? So, yeah, Joseph, I'll give you targets. We'll go back to them. I'll give you the targets in a moment. Uh, I just want to, I'm going to just show it from here. So, when I look at this, it's neutral right now, no matter what, until the 8 crosses the 21, I'm still going to be neutral on it. If we go back to Tesla, if we go back to the Tesla chart, we have the 8 cross through the 21. Okay, that tells me when I was pinned in here, I was still neutral. But if we got above the 55, I would consider on the close, I would consider the next trading day as a potential entry into a bullish trade. You're welcome, Joan. Okay. I just want to make sure I was explaining it properly. So right now, Joseph, what we're looking for on the upside, let me just kind of close that up a little bit. All right. On the upside, Joseph, we're looking at 204 and 219-ish are our upside targets. Downside is a phenomenal confluence about that 181 level, and then 165 is the next downside target. So 80 on the upside, 204. 219, and on the downside, we're looking at 181 and 165. Um, okay, then we had UVXY. And that was Michelle. Okay. So UVXY. So look at the pattern, guys. Look, I mean, you had this just aggressive move to the upside, aggressive move to the downside. Did we get a good Fib retracement right in there? I think we very well might have. We did. So look at what we what we um, achieved here, guys. We measured this move down. We came and made this move back up right here to the 50 percentile, one, two, three and a half standard deviation move, three and a half line move. So very, very, very awesome move off it. And then we came up and we fail at the moving average. We break the moving average. We fell right after. We come to the moving average. We fail. We go up, down, up. We're all over the place. We failed really at the uh, 3508 level. And then we pressed up. And guys, you can see how we're hitting these lines, right? You can see how we come up to those FIB levels. When I look at this, the bias on it, we, after today, we just crossed to the downside, the 8 crossed to the 55. Awesome. That means I'm bearish on this trade. Right now, the moving average is at 40, so I would like to see it close near the 40-point level today, ideally, or tomorrow, whenever it is, but sooner than, than later. Close near the 40, the moving average. The next day, bearish move down, and I would consider a bearish trade. Now, if I can get up and close at 40 and take a bearish trade at 39 and be out of the trade at, let's say, 36, it doesn't matter what option you trade. doesn't matter if you trade in the stock. The position is the position is the position. You take the trade. Either way, you take the trade, right? So what we're looking at is that 35 is the first downside target, and then... We are looking at uh, 20, so we would need Fibbit in there. It's a huge dollar amount. So we would have to split that level in half and, and apply a Fibbit to that. Okay. So upside, I'm looking at the eight period moving average, which is about 40, and then about 48 are the two upside targets. But for me, bearish bias, you just got to watch because we are pinned between the 3508 and the moving average. So we don't have a lot of wiggle room in there. The one day we jumped out and we pulled right back inside. So that's going to be where you're stuck. And if we stay in this sideways range, you're going to see the moving average get closer to that 3508 as we're looking for a breakout to, to take place. All right, let me see. I think... 
All right, so um, there we go. Debbie was asking. <laughs> uh, Bruce said, thank you for bringing everything that's supposed to be complicated to everyone that's starting over. You're welcome, Bruce. And I know there are a lot of you that are just that. So that's why I'm going to, I've got something very special at the end here today for you guys. Uh, especially those of you that are just kind of getting back involved or even are brand new. I've got something really that you're not going to want to miss. So hint, hint, you're going to want to stick around. All right, so Debbie was asking on ES. So let's just go over. I've got a template for ES. ES is the S&P 500 futures. It's the mini size future contracts. Guys, we trade everything here. We'll trade Forex, we trade futures, we'll trade options, equities, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to start getting a little bit into bonds. So if we look at the daily chart, Debbie, we're pinned between the 50 and the 618 on the ES, right on the pound F symbol, right, which is about 32 points. So well over 120 tick move inside of these FIB levels. Bias is bullish without doubt. We did stretch down to the moving average today and bounce, which was fantastic. If we look from the intraday chart of what took place intraday today, right, we can once again draw Fibonacci's here. I would draw them from here to here. We actually may have something setting up now. Let's see. All right, let me just pull them out a little more so I can see the numbers. All right, so I'd like it to close near the 50 and bounce. We don't have big moves in here, right, Debbie? This two-point move, one and three-quarter points. It's still a seven-tick move that's setting up in there, so there is a lot of – there is a decent move between those two fib lines is what I'm getting at. Um, but right now we are, you know, from a moving average standpoint, we're down below the lowest, move, uh, the lowest line, but the moving average is – the pink would have to cross through the yellow for me to say yes, bullish. So as we press up here, if we can get a close near that 21 and start to fail and the 8 cross through the, the 21, the pink cross through the yellow, pink is 8, yellow is 21. If we can get that to take place, and you can see the legend on the side, guys, by color and number there, right? If we can, take, if we can get that to happen, I love this for a potential bearish trade down to the 1949 level from 1950 and a quarter. If we push back up to that 150 and fail, uh, it, it's not bad. So here we are right now. We're pushing up. What do we got left in this candle? 35 seconds. Let's see what the next candle does. Uh, if you were going to take this trade, uh, I'd like it again to close near that 1950 and a half ish level. And we are below the lowest moving average. So if we can get that rollover, there is a consideration there, but I need it. I need to see it close near it. So we've got 14 seconds left. Guys, if you were getting the setup and you said, yes, I like it, you could go right in and just we'll just do a five-tick stop just to put one in there for now. All right, one second, didn't get the close, right? So we closed kind of here, you know, almost in the middle. Now we're pushing up, and then this becomes a little more of an aggressive setup now. If you're saying, all right, Rob, what about if I just take the wick, tags it, and it rolls over? You can, but it's a little bit more aggressive, that trade. Remember, it is lunchtime. It's 10 to 1. So the market is just kind of blah at this point, just hanging out, not a whole lot going on. You can as easily get the pop to the upside as you can the reversal right here. See? So to say let's take the trade when it's not in a perfect position is really not the best way to do it. So, Debbie, I'm looking at the 50 and the 618 on the downside, and I'm looking at that 236 fib line on the upside there. Um, let's see. I'll try, Joseph. Let's see. We had a couple others in there. All right. Then Bruce asked about flow, F-L-O. So let me go back to my four-pack. Let's take a look at flow. All right, lower price stocks, tougher for me just because of the, the fibs. Uh, the place I would draw Fibonacci's on this would be from this 
swing high to the swing low right in there. I don't have enough movement inside of here for me on this position, but that doesn't mean that you guys can't trade it. It just doesn't work for me. So we've got a big stair step pattern that just keeps up and down, up and down. Not really my favorite way to draw them, but if we're looking at this, uh, Bruce, if we're looking at this one, right now it looks like on the upside 17 and 3 quarter and 18 and a half for the upside targets and on the downside, oh darn, let's try to do that without messing it up. <laughs> On the downside, we're looking at 15 and three quarter and 14 and a quarter are the two downside targets. Now, there's enough move in here that I'm okay with that trade. You know, we're, we're taking that setup, but not the moves up in here. But the overall bias is bearish. We've been bearish from 27 all the way down to that 15 and a half level, uh, even back to where we are now. You're welcome there, Bruce. Um, Okay, just making sure I didn't miss anything. Bruce, I didn't see the, the comment you made. It appears to me it's it is being seasonal. Is that true? I don't remember who that was on, so I wasn't ignoring it. Just didn't uh, didn't see it. All right. So Jeff said on Tesla, you're looking for the golden ratio retreat. Let's see. Yes, Jeff. So the golden ratio retreat says what? Get up to the 618, close near it, roll over the next day, and it's a daily chart, and we take the bearish trade. Absolutely. And remember, that bearish trade will go against everything that you've been conditioned because the stock is moving in an upward direction. Yes, but it had this long bearish move. It's come back. If it fails at that level, first test of it, and this is, it's not been up since hitting its bottom. It's not been up to that purple line and close near it. If it closes near and rolls over, yes, we're going to be looking for the bearish trade there. Um, let's see, Intel. Let's go look at Intel. Uh, that was Joseph that put Intel in there. Oh my goodness gracious, this is just like an ugly. This is grandma's teeth, right? All these spaces in there. And yes, that is a technical term that I've heard a, a trader uh, coin. Anything that has large amounts of gaps, he calls grandma's teeth. Uh, very tough one to, to trade off of. We're in a neutral bias right now. Yeah, I know, Jeff, right? It's just laughing out loud. Oh, well. it, but that's what it is. It's just, it's very, there's a lot of open windows. Those of you that know candlestick trading, right? Can, a gap is an open window. The market doesn't like open windows. You got an open window here. You got one in here. This window almost closed, but not quite. So it's, it's just not a, it's not an easy position to chart from a technical perspective. Right, so if I were going to draw fibs on this, I would have to forego on that little hiccup in there because there's just not enough movement, and I would take it down to here, and that one would would void it, and we'd be okay with this one because of the gaps coming back into the middle of the gap. All of that would be gap theory, so that's fine. We would come down to this level right down at the bottom of 29. And it's still really not a big enough move. So here's the thing, guys. If you look at the 50 and the 618, if you look at those two levels right there, I want to see a minimum of $1 inside of there. Minimum of $1 inside of there is what I want to see. That's 75 on a daily chart, not an intraday. Intraday can be less. Daily chart, it's got to be a dollar. 75 cents. If there's a 20 or 30 cent bid ask spread. Implied volatility is a little bit high. Uh, you know, I get a 70 delta option. The stock moves a dollar. My option should move 70 cents, but I had a bid ask spread of 20 or 30 cents. And oh wait, the implied volatility was high and it was overvalued. So I make 20 or 30 cents on a dollar stock move. It's not worth it, right? I need at least 
that one dollar distance in there to have the opportunity to make any money. Okay, Kevin, thank you for putting that back in. I was just going to scroll back up to that. I have a question on the two-day traders camp. Do you and Michael show how to step-by-step -step set up the day in the life and the trades in eSignal? I don't I don't think you're using uh, for the DITO trades. I want to know if I come out if you guys can get me going on. Um, yeah, I mean, we can, Kevin. So in, in the traders camp, we show you how to set the orders up in eSignal. It's a matter of, and there's there's still the ability or the question rather of, can we or can you, and depending on your broker, can you set the conditional order up? If you can set the conditional order up with your broker that you're using through eSignal, so Tradier right now you cannot. Bill tells me that there is one that he has been using which is interactive brokers that you can set that conditional order up right inside of eSignal and have it work. I just have not seen it work, so I cannot say yes. But Jeff, we have, I mean, uh, Kevin, we have built a template. Actually, Avery from eSignal built it for us while he taught there, but we have a template built for the 4321 exit system right in um, eSignal. So as long as we're able to do it in interactive brokers, and yes, we will be teaching that. You're welcome. Um, okay, so um, so they don't have the, Bruce said, so if they don't have the information regularly, don't be concerned. Um, sorry, Bruce, again, I don't know where that was. So the two day coming up, Debbie, is going to be in Atlanta. The one after that, I haven't decided yet. It is in June. I haven't, so we put it on the schedule for the date. Haven't decided on a city yet. Uh, I'm working uh, hopefully this afternoon on picking the city for it. Okay, so Bruce, I was with Intel. Yeah, so if they don't have information, really don't be concerned. Yeah, that's okay, Bruce. Absolutely not. Chicago was nice in June. Yeah, Deb, my last experience in Chicago was interesting. So BC is saying two-day seminar for what level? The two-day event we're talking about, BC, in uh, we usually have held them in the past in Atlanta. We take you into a room in a building that's already got computers set up for you. It's a mock trading room. And that would be the person that has some basic knowledge of the market. Usually we teach you in a first-step event. You've got some basic knowledge of the market. And you want to learn the mechanics of the tools, like an e-signal, and you want to learn how to press the buttons and do the setups, the trade setups. So we're going to put you through drills and have you trading before you leave, multiple trades uh, that you will be doing over the course of two days while you're there. So if you've got a bait, and it doesn't have to be on options, guys. I'm more than happy for you to just trade the stock. It's just a matter of learning how to hit the buttons. Because if you can learn to trade the stock, you can learn the options component of it. Oh, there you go, BC. You put it in before I even said it, uh, or after I, I, I didn't see it when I started talking about it. You would ask stocks or options. Either one. It doesn't matter. We're, we focus on the trade setup of the stock. The options are only going to be, if you understand the component of the option, you can use them. And that's why I said if you have the basic understanding of the market, you can kind of trade that off in there then. Michelle, you're quite welcome. We do them every week. Michelle, every Monday we do this. Any e-mini stuff, Dennis, asking the two-day? Yes, we do talk e-minis in there as well, Dennis. We can't not talk about those. Yeah, Deb, you're going to have to remind me for the next two or three weeks that you're now Albert, <laughs> and I'll remember. <laughs> um, all right, so Robert said, by the way, I hope you trip back home. Yeah, I had no problem with the trip back home. That was fine, Robert. Oh, my daughters are doing great, both of them. Thank you. I appreciate it. So... Guys, I told you I had something special for you, right? Coming up on March 7th, 8 to 10 p.m. at night, right? And it will be recorded for those that are registered for it. Bill Corcoran is teaching a live workshop called Options 101. It's a two-hour premium workshop. Normally, is $149. The discount today is $149. So those of you that are brand new saying, I want to learn more about options, this is my first time here, Great, you need to register for this workshop. When we're done today, there will be a pop-up to take you into the store. If you don't see it, call the office at 
676-4410 and you know you just got to have an account and you do if you're registered for this class you have an account with better trades it's basically just an email address right someone we can send you the confirmation for it and they will get you registered for what's called options 101 it is on March 7th do not miss it guys $149 workshop we do not give stuff like this away very often yeah and BC it's for you for anybody Anybody that wants to come at all is welcome. We do have some that are new, that is their first introduction to better trades. If you look in your chat box on your toolbar on the right side of your screen, you will see a link that the admin put in there. Right? So now if you go, and let me just take you, if you go right to better trades, guys, and once you're registered, as a, when I say registered, once you have an account, right? You'll see some of the free workshops that we've got taught over here, right? You can scroll down. Here's the free on the, uh, actually, nope, that's not it. So this is going to be under the premium workshops. So if you go to my account, there's the, there's the offers that will come up today, right? These are the things that I am registered for right now, classes that I am registered for. And we just moved this around, and we're getting ready to do it again. So I don't know if they've got it on here or not, guys. You may have to just call the office to get it. Just do that. Um, any live workshops in Indianapolis, Indiana, Crossroads of America? So I am doing a workshop in Fort Wayne, Indiana. But nothing I have in Indianapolis right now. And that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's under the, the paid tab, Jeff. But So here we've got classes up on the top, right? You got a premium. Right, so I'm in classes, live online, let's just do that and get to that. These are all the onlines that we've got. Uh, I'm not seeing it under here, though. Shouldn't be on, on, de on demand because we don't have that, nor on location. Those are our next steps. All right, that's Jeff, I appreciate it very, very much. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Right? Paolo is uh, doing better. He said, Joseph, I appreciate you asking. We'll talk with him a little bit later. Um, I know, Jeff. I know. It's under the free. All right. So, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Right? <laughs> free live online. There it is. Okay. So, if you go to the classes, live online, under free is options 101. You can register for it right there. All right, and of course, there's all the power hours, the unplugs, the market mashups, some of the other free classes that we do. Guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for that. So Robert said, just enrolled in Options 101. Cool, cool. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. You have yourself a wonderful day. God bless, and I will see all of you next week. Some I'll be seeing tonight in the E-Mini Trader Talk. Take care, folks. Have a great day. See you all soon. Bye now. Oh, Dr. Tom, um, just send it to support at bettertrades.com, and they'll get it to me. All right, take care, folks.